What are we thinking here? Personal for, care for PG. Well, this is important. They have to they have to restore margins to where they were before the pandemic. That's going to be critical. It's a stock that trades at 26 times. Um, obviously, it's in the Joe T ETF. It's been there for the better part of the last five quarters. But the expectations for tomorrow are pretty high. They've got a very high bar to exceed. They're going to have to come in with revenue growth and really raise towards the upper end of uh, guidance. Right now, it's flat for 2023 to maybe plus 4%. You want to see that move to maybe plus 4% to plus 6%. So the onus is on P&G in kind of a show-me state. Uh, there's other areas in consumer staples like Hershey and Church and Dwight, which are giving you better near-term revenue growth than P&G. But collectively, we own 11 consumer staples. That seems to be the right place to be over the last 18 months. Mike, staples, 26 times is not cheap yeah, for P&G. No. I mean, no, it's not. Um, I mean, it's not you know, kind of out of the range, but it's at the upper end of the range for what it is typically traded for. And I think it's a very similar story. Look, it has an Apple multiple, and it's got the quality premium that is afforded to Apple as well. Totally different in other ways, except it's also a low top-line growth story right now. Um, so, yes, it is all about how much they can uh, sidestep the cost side while, you know, kind of finishing up on the, uh, on the price increases on the product. So, um, you know, I do think it is, again, kind of the... The, the reason you pay to uh, have a boring but stable story, uh, see if they can redeem that. You'll get, Joe, too, quickly, um, a good read on consumer, trade down, just what, what they are seeing from the consumer in real time. Yeah, I, listen, again, so this is just my personal opinion, and that's what makes a market. But, but I've, I've already resigned to myself to the fact that we're weakening. That's, in fact, what we're doing. And, you know, I cited the before uh, auto delinquencies beginning to rise. That's a critical element. That's telling you how stressed the consumer ultimately is. So the Federal Reserve, Scott, on May, on May 3rd, uh, whether they pause or not, if they do pause, it'll probably be the most hawkish pause in the history of monetary policy, because they're basically like your parents, going to let you out from punishment, but scold you and tell you that if you do it again, the punishment's going to be far worse than anything you've ever felt. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to see there. Um, Joe, thank you.